Welcome to Real World Peaceful Parenting, a podcast for parents that are tired of yelling, threatening, and punishing their kids. Join mom and master certified parent coach Lisa Smith as she gives you actionable step-by-step strategies that'll help you transform your household from chaos to cooperation. Let's dive in. Welcome, welcome, welcome to today's episode. I absolutely love being with you here each week. And I'm so proud of you for investing this time in your parenting, in your kids, and your family. Well done. And before I share today's episode, I have an invitation for you. Yes, you. This is for you if you have more than one kid, multiple children, and there's fighting in your home. Sibling fighting, sibling rivalry, name calling, shouting, hitting, not getting along and you don't know what to do about it. If you have your hand raised right now, or you were like, hey, that's us, or maybe you're thinking, Lisa, do you have a camera in my house? (laughs) Well, I don't have a camera in your house, I promise, but I do know how this chaos goes, and I know why. Yes, I know why. I know exactly why. And on Thursday, April 7th, I'm going to share with you all the secrets to sibling fighting. Imagine what it would be like for you if sibling fighting were no longer an issue in your family. On Thursday, April 7th at 9 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Mountain, 11 o'clock Central, and 12 o'clock Eastern, I'm going to be offering a live workshop called the Sibling Fighting Workshop. And in the 90-minute workshop, we're going to address sibling fighting. In the workshop, I'm going to teach you why your kids fight, what doesn't work in helping to resolve the sibling conflict, why your kids can't stop, what you should do about it, and when to step in and when to let them work it out. In this 90-minute live workshop, I'll make sure to include time to answer all your questions and we'll have some live coaching. And in the spirit of 2022, the year of becoming a better parent, I'm offering this workshop for only $22. If you can't make it live, no problem. Everybody who signs up for the workshop will get a recording and lifetime access to the recording so you can watch it over and over and over again and share it with your co-parent if you'd like. So head on over to thepeacefulparent.com forward slash fighting. So that's thepeacefulparent.com forward slash fighting to get all the details and to save your spot in the class. And I'll see you there. Now, if you've been listening to me for a while, you know that I try to bring you tips, ideas, and support that helps you create deep connection and cooperation with your kids. And today I have a special treat for you. Today I'm joined by a Hive member named Kate. Kate reached out for support around getting her four-year-old very strong-willed son, Mr. Four, as we call him, quote, back on track. Kate's been moving down the path of peaceful parenting for a couple years now with much success. However, recently, Kate, her husband, and her son's lives have been turned upside down a bit, and their normal status quo and routine has been disrupted. They've lived in a bit of chaos for the last 90 days due to a series of unforeseen events. And I really wanted to bring you this coaching call today because I know many of us can relate to this, especially in 2022. Many of us have had our normal status quo and our routine be disrupted. Maybe you're living in chaos right now, or you're just coming out of a season of chaos. And so I wanted you to be able to hear how Kate and I work through getting back on track. So Kate reached out for help and support. And she specifically asked me, Lisa, how do I define the line between peaceful parenting and permissive parenting? I feel like I've somehow slipped into being a permissive parent with some things. And my very strong-willed four-year-old son is storming nonstop and constantly shouting no at us. I'm a loss on how to fix this mess. Please help. So listen in as I coach Kate through the tools to use with her strong-willed four-year-old the tools that are going to create connection and cooperation in the home. 
All righty. Welcome, Kate. So excited to have you here today and talk with you about this important topic. Hi, Lisa. Thank you for having me. Oh, this is going to be fabulous. I love bringing these live coaching sessions to the listeners of the podcast. So you have a four-year-old, scrumptious, amazing, delightful, strong-willed little boy who we're going to call Mr. Four, right? Yes. Yes, I do. All right. And what you reached out and wanted to talk about today is the fine line between peaceful parenting and permissive parenting. So give us some some background, some thoughts, and then we'll jump in. Um, Well, like you had mentioned, my son is very strong-willed. I don't know where he gets that from. (laughs) (laughs) And we've had a couple months of storming when he is told no. It's not just the pouty lip and that I'm going to go pout. It is a Category 5 hurricane that just explodes. And I am concerned that maybe I have slipped into some permissive parenting that is allowing this. And so I want to get back on course and kind of help him out and make things a lot better for him. Okay. So strong-willed kid doesn't like, no, he's got to be the only kid in the entire world ever born that doesn't like the word no. Right. (laughs) Yeah. And the storms feel more intense all of a sudden. Is that, is that, what it feels like. Is that what you're saying? They feel different. Yeah, this is definitely a different horse, a a different color, if you will. They're getting more violent. And I mean, he is a big kid for being four. He looks like he could be six. He's very solid and stocky. And so I want to help him be able to soothe himself down Um, With my help, you know, I don't expect him to be 25 and able to do this all on his own overnight or anything like that, but just some pointers on how to help him because I know this is upsetting him because when he's in his storm, he just has this look on his face like, I don't know what this is. Mama, help me. Gotcha. Yeah. It's good that you said that because just to review what we know is that when they are storming, they're speaking the language of help, right? If I knew how to help myself, I would. If I knew Mm -hmm. how to ask for help, I would. So just to have a little refresher in case anybody's new to listening to the podcast, you know, when our kids are storming, they're speaking the language of help. If I knew how to help myself, if I knew how to calmly ask you for help, I would. This is the only way that I know how to ask for help is to storm. So it sounds like the storms are getting bigger and he's He's not able to avoid the storm. So let me ask you this. It's probably a direction you didn't expect the conversation to go. But, you know, at four years old, naturally, I don't feel in control of a lot of things because I'm four and I don't Mm -hmm. have a lot of control. And I happen to know that you've had a lot going on in your life recently. You've traveled a little bit. You guys have had some family situations. So you haven't necessarily been in your status quo routine and things have been different for you all. You've you've had to do some different things. So how do you think that's playing into the storming a little bit? I can definitely see how that would make him uneasy because the status quo is no longer the status quo. Yeah, life has been big for all of us lately. And I can definitely, I could see how that would be a problem. Yeah, so let's say we'll just make some things up here. For the sake of this, let's say that you guys have had a lot of, uh, or to use your word, things have not been status quo for 90 days, right? It's been like three months, let's say. A series of different events have, have caused you to be out of your rhythm and routine that you had worked hard to establish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the areas that I had control, i.e. the predictability, are gone. And as a four-year-old, I don't know when they're coming back. So now, in addition to my normal storming, I have a very strong sense of the little control I did have. I no longer have it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you had a house guest for a while who right before all these other things happened, the house guest was in, which was a little bit of a problem. I mean, not that the guest was a problem, but just a new human. Mm -hmm. And then the house guest left. Yes. Yeah. So here's my question. And again, not probably not where we thought we were going to take this. 
But how can you parent in a way? And of course, I know the answer, so I'm going to give it to you. But how can you parent in a way that actually causes him to say no less often so he doesn't have to storm? And I'm not saying be permissive, right? But the number one thing strong-willed kids want, we know, because I teach you this and I've talked about it before in the podcast and I teach it in my course, Peace and Quiet, the crash course for parenting your strong-willed kids. The number one thing strong-willed kids want is to feel in control. And for a series of events that, Kate, you have no control over, the Mr. Four's sense of control was ripped out from under him temporarily. We're going to get back to routine. All these things are starting to settle down in your life. But there was a period of time where, let's just call it, it was chaos. That's a good word. (laughs) Okay, good. I'm glad we can agree upon that word. Absolutely. (laughs) Yeah. And you were probably dysregulated based on some of the events you had going on, right? Some of them. Yes, absolutely. I struggled with self-regulation myself. Okay. So if we take stock, I'm four and my rhythm and routine, my status quo that I count on is gone and no one can tell me when it's coming back. And my parent who I spend and the human that I spend the most hours with the day is dysregulated. So I'm going to storm a lot. Can you just see that? Is, Is that... I just want you to be able to kind of take that in from a 50,000 foot level because when we're in it, and this is great that we're talking about this and letting other people have a peek into this, because as the parent, when we're in the middle of that storm, it's hard to see this perspective, right? Because it just feels like it's just out of control. Well, why don't you tell me what it feels like? I completely agree with that word is out of control. It feels big and heavy. When I reached out to you, I was literally sitting at my kitchen table bawling my eyes out because I didn't know where to go. You know, there was no way up at that point. Yeah. I love it. I love that you reached out. And you know, I'm always here for you. Oh yeah, for sure. (laughs) Yeah. So that's, you know, just side note, this is the kind of relief that one can get from reaching out to a parent coach and a community is just when I don't know where to go, I reach out and I go there. So, so now you can see, you know, we're at a point where there's not a storm going on this second. And Mm -hmm. so you can get up at the 50,000 foot level and see all the things going on for Mr. Four and gain some perspective. Yes. Yes. That's important. That's an important component of peaceful parenting is to gain some perspective, is to stop taking it personally, is to get out of the power struggle, the tug of war that you're playing in your mind, if not also literally with our kids, to to have someone help you perform a pattern interrupter in your brain so you're not locked into judgment of you, of him, and the judgment leads to a trigger and the trigger leads to you storming alongside him. So for those listening, if, if this is all you do, is go gain perspective with someone. It is really an important step and a beautiful first step in getting out of the dysregulated cycle. It's just taking a minute to say, hey, here's how it feels for me. Help me understand what's going on. So speak to that for us, Kate. How do you feel already? (laughs) I feel better just simply talking to you because I know that this is all going to get fixed or not fixed, but better. (laughs) Yeah. We'll Uh, onboard some tools for you. Yeah. And I can see looking back over even the last six months, not even just three, uh, you know, we had status quo and then life just tailspinned and we have been in survival mode for a long time Mm. and watching him come out of that we are on spring break right now. And the last two days, um, we have just been home uh, just because plans have fallen through. And he woke up sick this morning. So we've canceled all plans and we're just chilling. We're doing what we want to do. We basically eat, sleep, wash and repeat. <laughs> Beautiful. So you're bringing some of that status quo and predictability back into his life. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. That's one of the tools right there. How can we? And, you know, we we can't always in the middle of, you know, a crisis, we have to ride that out. But when we can get back to status quo, it's a beautiful thing. And sometimes it looks like just 
hanging out together and watching movies and like you said, doing what we want and snuggling and just assuring him that it's okay. Mm -hmm. Right. So let's yeah. talk about the other, the storming part of it. Cause I want to give you some practical tools here. So I think with a four-year-old strong-willed little boy, one of the greatest tools that we have is choices, right? And the reason choices are important is because the number one thing a strong-willed kid wants is to feel, that's the critical word in the sentence, in control, predictability, repeatability, status quo, to use some of the words that we've used. And one of the best ways at his age, any age, by the way, but his age, to help him feel in control is to give him choices. Now, as you know, Kate, but we'll let the listeners in on this. It's always choices we can live with, right? It's not like ice cream or M&Ms for breakfast, right? Or do you want to go to bed now or never, right? It's, it's choices, right. <laughs> right? It's instead of saying things like, come eat your breakfast, where you're just begging for a no, right? We're going to say, hey, are you ready to eat breakfast now or in five minutes? Do you want eggs or waffles? Do you want to wear the blue shirt or the red shirt? Do you want to put your shoes on first and then your coat or your coat and then your shoes? And it's, it's giving him choices that are going to help him feel in control. And the side benefit is working yourself out of situations where he is being invited to say no to you, right? The, you know, a great example is, hey, come eat breakfast. No. Okay, now what? Now I'm stuck. Now I'm automatically either going to feel permissive because I give into it as the parent, or mm -hmm. I'm going to engage in a power struggle where I feel dominant, where I feel like I'm forcing him to come to the table and eat breakfast. Neither of those extremes feel good and they don't help the strong-willed kid at the other end feel in control. Yes. I'm, I'm watching a movie play in my head of the last night. And yes, that is very correct choices. He is a big, give me choices kid. And it's easy to understand in chaos or crisis that may be the e first thing to go out the door because you're juggling so many things in your mind, right? And it's not status quo. And so we have a tendency as parents when we're stressed to want to fall back on barking orders. Eat breakfast, get your shoes on. We got to go, come on, right? It's just natural for all of us, mm -hmm. which is why it's great to be a part of the hive where you can come back and have a touchstone of being reminded, <clears throat> oh yeah, that's right. Strong-willed kid wants to feel in control. Choices are a great way for a four-year-old to feel in control. Choices are easy for me. I know how to do that. Let me go back to that, you know, breakfast now or in five minutes, red shirt or blue shirt, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he definitely thrives on that. Yeah, and it's just it's just a matter of recommitting to it, of, of bringing yourself back to how do I offer that and offering it from a place of connection, Right. I think that's the other critical part here. It's not from a place of being permissive. Mm -hmm. It's from a place of, I want my kid to feel in control. I want him to feel calm and regulated throughout the day. And one of the tools I know works is choices. So I'm not being permissive, right? Permissive would be, you know, Oreos or Chips Ahoy for breakfast. Right. I think. I mean, that's just what I, yeah. Not that you can't offer your kid Oreos or Chips Ahoy, but I'm using an example. <laughs> But I don't think saying shoes and then coat or coat, then shoes, brush your teeth now or in five minutes is permissive. It's building connection with your kids. And what we know is that when there's connection, cooperation follows. When we're mandating compliance, right? Or when we're mandating, when we're demanding things, we don't get cooperation, we get compliance. Yes, that's absolutely correct. One question that I have is, when I slip into my dominant side due to crisis or not being awake yet, <laughs> how do I recover from that without it being permissive? Mm, such a great question. Okay. First of all, you get a large cup of coffee <laughs> and drink it quickly. And yes. then, uh, then we simply, again, another tool we've talked about on the podcast here, then we simply have a do-over. You know what, buddy? Let's freeze. We make it playful and fun because remember, a four-year-old's hardwired for FUN, right? So it gives us an opportunity to reset our mindset. Okay, I'm, I'm not offering choices. 
I'm being dominant. I know this isn't going to work. And this is not how I want to parent. I don't feel at my best. So let's have a do-over. So, you know, you might even make a fun game of it. Like, hey, sweetheart, let's rewind the tape and do our morning over. You go jump back in bed. I'll jump back in bed and we'll just start over. Right. And I like that. Yeah. We're literally just saying, hey, I went down the wrong path. Let me put the car in reverse, back it up and try a different street. Yep. I think he would totally run with that. Yeah. And then the beauty (laughs) also of this, there's so many benefits. The beauty is we're modeling mistakes are okay. We're modeling that we all have a bad day. We're modeling that we can recover. You know, we can stop the power struggle and have a do over and try again down the road. You'll, after you do this for a while, he'll say to you, can I have a do-over? Can you have a do-over, mommy? Can we have a do-over? And we just begin again. You know, we bring ourselves back to the lesson, like a good meditation practice, right? I, I got down the wrong path or I lost the mantra. You know, when I'm meditating, I have a mantra and my mind drifts and I realize it's drifted. Now I'm thinking about which chicken recipe I'm going to make for dinner. And I go, oh yeah, just go back to the mantra. So I gently bring myself back to the mantra and begin again. And this is what you can do, Kate. It's like, oh yeah, that's right. I I got dysregulated for a moment. Maybe I got a phone call or maybe I'm thinking about what I've been through or maybe I'm missing someone or maybe I'm frustrated that the last three months have been what they want, have been what they are. And I'm overthinking it and I got dysregulated for a moment. I got triggered. Oh, yeah, let me just work that cortisol out of my body, soothe myself back to regulation and begin again. And then you can start to do it out loud with him. Hey, let's just begin again. Let's have a do-over. Do-overs feel so delicious and fun. We actually call them restarts. And I used to do that. And I, it's weird how our brains get rid of or eject these tools, then we have to come back and learn them and then reapply and keep doing that. But that, yeah, I think he will do well with that. Yes. Well, and it's funny. I mean, it's not like you could have, we did not rehearse or practice the script at all before we jumped on today to record, but that is exactly why I have a weekly podcast and I have some basic tools that I talk about every week. Like connection and storming is the cry for help. And, you know, a strong-willed kid wants control. And then we have a do-over because it helps all of us remember these core basic tools and then just recommit to them. And we all fall off, all of us for, for different reasons. It happens a lot. And so then it, when you notice, oh, I'm getting dysregulated, he's not only storming, but I am too. And I forgot that we've moved past status quo and I'm not giving choices because I'm dysregulated a lot based on what I've been through. Then you can just bring yourself back to the tools, which is really what we've just done. We've reconnected you with the peaceful parenting toolbox. You started out being worried about permissive parenting and we just reconnected with the whole peaceful parenting toolbox of tools to use in your peaceful parenting with Mr. Four. So do you have the same concern now that you've crossed over into permissive parenting? No, I don't. I feel a lot more calm and that I can do this and that he will be okay. (laughs) Beautiful. Wonderful. Awesome, Kate. Well, thank you so much. We're going to follow up with you in a couple of weeks and do a quick little check-in and see how it's going and see what you noticed. And I just, I can't wait to hear how it's going for the two of you as you use the tools that we've talked about to create the connection with your son. Because what we all know, or what I know, and I'm teaching you all every week, is that connection leads to cooperation. And what happened for Kate, I'm going to say, is a series of events drove her a little bit away from creating that connection on a day-by-day, hour-by-hour basis with her four-year-old. And so the power struggle started. And what she needed is just a quick little refresher to come back and remember the tools in the toolbox that when she pulls them out and uses them leads to connection. And then the connection leads to cooperation because when I'm connected with my parent, I feel seen, heard, and valued. I feel like I'm being given choices. My voice matters. My parent cares. They see me rather than 
barking orders at me or making demands or working towards compliance. And so when I feel connected, I want to cooperate. And that's where the magic sits. So I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. Kate, thank you so much. Can't wait again. Can't wait to hear how the tools work for you. We'll be sure to do a follow-up in a couple of weeks and see how it's going. And we'll link in the show notes to the different podcasts that I've referenced, the do-over and uh, the strong-willed kid. We'll link to those in the show notes as well. So thank you for listening today, everybody. I enjoyed this. I hope you got a lot out of it. I want to give a special big real world peaceful parenting shout out to Kate for coming on and, and talking with us and being open to this. And until we meet again, I'm wishing you peaceful parenting. Thanks for listening to real world peaceful parenting. If you want more info on how you can transform your parenting, visit the peacefulparent.com. See you soon. Thank you.